Philip Eaton is visiting with us, and he is a medical doctor, board certified in dermatology, which this time of year with all this bright sunshine is something we all need to be concerned with. Thank you for your time. And of course, skin cancer is something I pay a lot of attention to, sure. and, but all of us should. Tell us the effects that skin cancer has on the general population. Well, it's a very important public health issue right now. So about 3.5 million people annually are going to be affected with skin cancer. And about 12,000 people in the U.S. alone annually will die from skin cancer. So it's a very important thing that we do to protect ourselves from the sun because that's going to help reduce our rates of skin cancer in the long term. So we're not born with skin cancer. It comes as exposure to the sun. That's exactly right. So none of us are born with skin cancer. Some of us are born with a predisposition to develop skin cancer. So and who are those people? People who have northern European ancestry, light hair, light eyes, light skin, the tendency to burn in the sun, exactly. So you're, you're the poster child. Yeah. So, um, you know, people who may be on immunosuppressive drugs or have Im compromised immune systems, they might be more susceptible to skin cancer. How too. can we protect ourselves? Well, you know, we, we like to do what the Australians have recommended to do a long time ago when we say slip, slop, and slap. So you slip on a shirt, you slop on some sunscreen, and you slap on a hat. And so not all sunscreens were created equal. In the history of sunscreens, they weren't as protective as they are now today. So what we want to look for is a sunscreen that's broad spectrum, which protects from UVA and UVB wavelengths. Talk about those two wavelengths and the differences in them, please. So historically, UVB was the one that we protected from. And that's what SPF is protecting you from. When you see the SPF 30 or 50 or 15 on a bottle, it's measuring the amount of protection that you're getting from the UVB wavelength of light, which is what burns you in the sun. Oh, it gives you an actual sunburn. That's what gives you the sunburn. But more recently, we've come to understand that the UVA wavelength of light also contributes to skin cancer and the development of that. So now they have blockers for that as well. And so that wavelength doesn't give us a sunburn and make us get blisters and all that. And that's why people didn't worry about it as much, because you didn't have those immediate effects. But it can affect our cells and cause them to mutate. Absolutely, it can. Absolutely. And then it also affects your, your, your aging of the skin. Ah. So that's something that we appeal to people from time to time, because it's funny, studies have actually shown that if you you tell people, well, the ultraviolet radiation can cause cancer, uh, or but it can also age your skin. People actually respond a little bit more to the fact that it can age you. And I'm going to say that this is a perfect example of that. This is an aging factor, and sure. I have been had tremendous sun exposure throughout my life because they didn't have sunscreen when I was a little girl. Sure, right. And you've told me an interesting factor. You don't have to have a million sunburns to become at risk. It's a relatively small number. It is a relatively small number. So about three blistering sunburns increases your risk for skin cancer. In your lifetime. In your lifetime. Very few of us can say that that hasn't happened. I've been there myself. Mm -hmm. So it, it happens to a lot of people. And it's startling because one in five people, American people, will, will have a skin cancer in their lifetime. How frequently should we apply sunscreen? And are there different modes of action within sunscreens? There are. So I usually tell people a general rule of thumb is to reapply your sunscreen about every hour when you're out in the sun. Um, they say they last from about 40 to 80 minutes. The FDA has regulated what, se what it says on the sunscreen bottle to say how often it needs to be reapplied. So it's usually going to say 40 or 80 minutes uh, lasting in the sun. So if I buy an SPF 90, which you know I'm always looking for, that doesn't mean I can put that on and stay out for four hours. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Um, realistically, you can still develop you know, burns and things like that. And it's still the UVA damage that you're getting that the SPF 90 isn't telling you about. Mm -hmm. So what we do like to see is people reapplying every Constant hour. Constant reapplication. Yeah, yeah, which isn't always fun. You, know, you don't want to stop what you're doing. But I tell you what, it's not fun being in my office either. Um, or, now, the sprays I have found are easy for me to use. Um, if I get one that has an SPF, have you said 30 to 50 is what you like to see? Exactly. Oh. And, um, and it's broad spectrum, so it gives me protection from both wavelength types. Mm -hmm. um, is a spray 
generally effective? I like sprays. I think they work well. I think they're convenient for people to use. And it can be generally effective. And one thing that I find important is that you just don't spray it on oh. and then walk away. Uh -huh. Spray it on and rub it into your skin so it covers everything. So you get total so it, coverage. Exactly. And then for the face, spray it into your hands and then rub it on your face to cover your face and, and ears. And important to do your ears? Very important to do the ears. Skin cancer is very prevalent on the ears. Now, when I was little, the lifeguards would have white noses. That's right. And that, I guess, was a physical block. And mm -hmm. you said there, that still is available in certain sunscreens. It sure is, yeah. So the technology, as far as that, hasn't changed. It's still zinc oxide. But the technology has improved in that it's not going to look like a big white paint spot on your face anymore. So you can imagine no one would want to cover their entire face and body with that thick zinc oxide. But now they have it micronized, so it's microscopic and it blends in well to your skin. So it just gives you a natural skin tone. For people who have sensitive skin, that might be a better choice in that it is actually more of a physical block rather than a chemical block. Is that correct? Absolutely. And they make sensitive skin sunscreens, which usually contain some of those physical blockers and maybe less alcohol and things like that. If you have young children, when can you put sunscreen on them? When is it safe for them to it's have sunscreen It's about six on? months old. So what we tell people is before that time, cover them up or just don't take them out in those really sunny environments. Keep them in the shade. Um, after that, you can use some of those sunscreens, and particularly some of the physical blockers of the baby sunscreens. What should we look for? I go every year, and they get this thing and zap me with it, and then I have little black spots over me. Um, and so I am going every year, but what can, as a general precaution, can the public do to examine themselves? That's a great question. So you want to look at your skin once a month and check over for anything that's not healing, a, a spot that's bleeding and it won't heal, something that's growing or changing. And then for melanoma skin cancers, we like the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma detection. Now, I'm going to stop you for a moment. Melanoma skin cancer means what? It's a, it's a skin cancer from the cells that create the color in your skin or moles. Oh, so yeah. that's connected with moles, but it can occur at a spot just where the cells are, where there was not necessarily Absolutely. a mole. Absolutely. So it can be what we call de novo, means it comes up brand new oh. outside of a mole, okay. or it can come from an actual mole. Existing mole. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, examine those moles, make sure they're not changing or growing or doing anything funny. If it is symptomatic or giving you trouble, go see someone about it. It's much better to see a doctor and have them say, hey, it's fine, nothing to worry about it, than to neglect something and have it be a problem down the road. That is the most dangerous form of skin cancer. Yes, it is. Yeah, it can sometimes be aggressive. Um, fortunately, nowadays, with, with more awareness, uh, we're finding them earlier, we're catching them earlier, so they're, they're less fatal than they used to be. Um, but if you let it go too long, it can be a real problem. When we examine ourselves, most of us just think of our face and our ears and our arms, but um, you said even feet, so we need to look all over. Look all over, head to toe. I tell people and behind once a month. Also. Behind also. Uh -huh. Yeah, even where the sun doesn't shine because the sun is one major factor for developing skin cancer, but it's not the only factor. Genetics have things to do with it too. So if you have a lot of moles, you're at a higher risk. If you've had a family history of melanoma or skin cancer, you're at a higher risk. And so those people really need to be checking themselves out and seeing their dermatologist or a practitioner of some sort to, to look at their skin. Because it's with all cancers, early detection is key. Is key. Prevention, early detection. E exactly, that's what we wanna see. Dr. Eaton, I wanna thank you for sharing this information with today and I imagine some people would like to know a good place to go for reliable true medical advice or information. Is there a website you'd recommend? There are. There are a lot of great websites to find out more about skin cancer and sun protection. Uh, one of them would be the American Academy of Dermatology which is at AAD Org. A A D dot org, okay. And another one is skincancer.org, O R G. Okay. And um, th that's from the Skin Cancer Foundation. So right. those are great resources for everyone. Well, and I want to thank you and your sweet wife, Bernadette, because um, y'all brought me a present. You brought me a um, a hat like the Australians would encourage me to wear and um, even put a flower on the top of it. That's right. So that now I can slip, slip. schlop, and, and slap. slap. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks very much.